This is the pulse of the plankton for the week of April 12th, 2021. Fresh from the edge of San Francisco Bay via light microscope, a snapshot of local marine plankton last week in the zooplankton. Zooplankton are the animal-like plankton that eat other organisms. They were barnacles. And before barnacles settle, like these mature gooseneck barnacles have, they live as plankton, drifting in the water column. Barnacle larvae, called nauplii, were present and common in the plankton early in the week, but by the end of the week, they were just one of the crowd of zooplankton. Copepods, both adult and young nauplii, were common, with more of their nauplii bouncing around the sample later in the week. There were still a few copepods, with paratrix ciliates again this week. Ciliates are single-celled, vase-shaped organisms with wiggling cilia. A pluteus larva, probably from a sand dollar, looking like a spaceship. And a siphonot larva of a bryozoan, shaped like a squashed party hat. This tiny tenophore, a sea gooseberry, had such long combs, plates of fused cilia that it uses to move. No pulse would be complete without worms. This week we had many more polychaetes, a beautiful scale worm, also a spionid and a pheronid. And of course, a mystery egg. Who are you? A planula, some kind of worm larva. It wouldn't slow down long enough for a good look. A lone foram showed up. The single-celled organism makes a shell-like structure that spirals. Last week in the phytoplankton, the phytoplankton are the plant-like plankton that make their food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Protoperidinium, a dinoflagellate, was present in the plankton, but only a few here and there. This one was still enough so that we could see its two flagellates, one like a rippling belt around its middle and the other reaching out like a tail between the bottom two points. Diatoms are single-celled algae with cell walls of glass, like opal. Catoceros is a large genus of diatoms, and there were so many early in the week. They're straight chains, curved chains, balls of chains. Some had diatoms attaching to their spines. These catoceros were forming cysts inside their cells. See the little nuggets inside each cell? with little spines off them, those are the cysts. Many diatoms other than catoceros form chains. In this week's sample, there were lithodesmium with stacking triangular cells, Asterionelopsis named for its star shape, Gunardia with its tiny spines, Stephanopixis, Next to Stephanopixis is this little clump of Thalassionema. Some solitary diatoms that we saw this week included this one, a dead arachnidiscus with a spiderweb pattern, and Coscinodiscus, like a slice of a lemon. There were many of these centric diatoms, and many are hard to tell apart from each other when they are alive. And then there's this very mobile Pleurosigma, a pointy Rhizosilinia, and still showing up, long and lovely, this very long diatom, Thalassiothrix longissima. See how long it is? I had to zoom out to fit the whole diatom into one screen. Here, next to this Dotylum diatom, is a small clump of phaeocystis. They are not diatoms, and in large numbers, they can be a major component of sea foam. Pacific Coast Ocean Weather. Simply a spring banquet is underway in the plankton food web. Diatoms, especially Catoceros, have been fueled by nutrients in upwelled deep waters and are surging Copepods are common and active, 
feeding directly on the phytoplankton feast. And they are certainly not feasting alone. Think of all those barnacle bellies early in the week, full and golden with algae. This banquet does not appear to be localized. Several weeks ago, net toes up and down the state were replete with catasteros. This week, dinoflagellates became firmly dominant in samples from Point Conception South, while Northern California sites continue to see diatom dominance. If we look, we can see this pattern echoed in coastal physics. Point Conception, often a key breakpoint in our coastal oceanography, is the nubby north of Los Angeles. North of the nubby, we see strong upwelling winds, red arrows streaming down along the coastline, and sites are reporting diatom dominance. South of the nubby, the winds along the coast are weaker, green and blue, and sites are reporting dinoflagellate dominance. And look at this. The same pattern is visible in water temperature. Here we can see the sea surface temperatures are unusually cold, which is blue, or warm, which is red, and those dinoflagellates south of Point Conception flourishing in unusually warm seawater and those calmer winds. The diatoms north of Point Conception enjoying upwelling winds and the cold, nutrient-rich waters they bring. So, springtime upwelling off central California. Just how exceptional has it been this year? Pretty exceptional. Now, stay with me. I want you to focus on this here. This is the Little Chick constellation. The dark blue dot at the tip of its tail is January. And from there we move through the year February, March, April, all the way around its belly back to December. The Chick constellation maps our typical year in terms of nutrients and upwelling. Usually in April, we're around this light green dot at the top of the Chick's head. But this year, we're way up here. This week in April is the light green dot way up at the top in the land of unusually high nitrate and upwelling, we are way, way off chick. That was Pulse of the Plankton for the week of April 12th, 2021. Like and subscribe for more plankton-related content. And remember, always support your local National Marine Sanctuary.